welcome to I-24 News Sports Daily Magazine with all the latest scores and stories from the world of sports. And we have plenty of action coming your way. Barcelona or Atletico Madrid, only one of them will make it tonight to the semifinals of the Copa del Rey. Novak Djokovic will try to avenge his loss in Melbourne last year when he faces Stanislas Wawrinka, this time in the semifinals of the Australian Open. And Kobe Bryant once again will probably finish his season way too early due to injury. All this and much more coming up right now. We begin in Spain, where Atletico Madrid hopes to do something almost unheard of, throw Real Madrid and Barcelona out of the Copa del Rey one after the other. They already did it with Real Madrid in the previous round. Now it's Barcelona, but Atletico has a big challenge ahead. They lost the first match in the Camp Nou 1-0, which means they have to score tonight and try to avoid from Barcelona a very precious away goal. As always, manager Diego Simeone is counting on the toughness and the fighting spirit of his players. We have to play every minute as if it was the last of the match. That's the way to get closer to our goal. If we play every minute from the first until the 95th and beyond, if there was more, we won't have a problem. That's how we have to play. We cannot get unfocused playing against them. Why? Because they have all these skills we have already experienced playing all these games against them. There's just a little problem for Atletico. They are facing the hottest team in Spain at the moment. Barcelona is looking especially strong now, with a combination of Messi and Neymar being extremely lethal. But manager Luis Enrique knows that the result from the first match means everything is still open, and he knows exactly what is in stake. I only have qualifying in mind. I'm not even thinking about what happens if we lose. I only think about what will happen if we win. I don't know whether this is our most important match so far. For me, it's a qualifier. The Copa del Rey's qualifier is at stake. Reaching the semifinals is at stake. Now to England, where the semifinals of the League Cup are being played, and one team already booked its place in the final at Wembley. Just four days after the embarrassing loss in the FA Cup, Chelsea gave some compensation to their fans. It wasn't easy after the one-all draw against Liverpool in the first leg. There were no goals here after 90 minutes. The away goal rules apply only after 120 minutes here, so the game went to extra time. And there, Chelsea finally found the net. Ivanovic did it four minutes into the extra time. And after referring to his team as a disgrace on Saturday, manager Jose Mourinho sounded completely different this time. Big, big semi-final. Two big games, but, but speaking about this one, a big game, really big. Uh, both teams in, in the limits and the result in, in the edge. And the result speaks by by itself. 1-1 uh, there, 0-0 zero, zero here, extra time, one goal to decide. A big semi-final, really. And the second semi-final will be decided tonight when Sheffield United host Tottenham. The London team won the first leg 1-0. Still with football, but with the politics behind the game, we're now seven years ahead of the very controversial 2022 World Cup in Qatar, and pressure on FIFA to think again about the venue is constantly growing. It's not just football pol figures making these calls now. Politi political figures are now joining. The new committee set up recently in the European Union is calling for a new vote due to serious corruption allegations. There's clear evidence, which I have seen, uh, paper evidence uh, showing that a substantial amount of money changed hands to buy votes from the African Federation, which then, uh, if you like, back tipped the balance uh, in the executive of FIFA to award the World Cup to Qatar. And my report was recommending that recognition of that breach of the rule of law that, in fact, they should rerun the 2018, 2022 World Cup process for choosing the country for that event. Tennis now, and judging by what we have seen so far, it will be very hard to stop Serena Williams on the way to the title in Melbourne. The world number one won the Australian Open five times in her career, but the last one came in 2010. She is now just two games away from clinching number six. Serena won her quarterfinal clash with Slovakia's Dominika Tsiburkova in straight sets, 6-2, 6-2. She made it look very easy as she needed just a bit over an hour to do it, and she feels very good with her performance on the court. I felt I, had, I played well. I felt I had to. 
Um, I feel like when you're going up a player like her who's very confident on the court, she just beat a, she had a good ma few matches. I knew that I needed to really play well or go home. On to the men's tournament where last year's champion is showing no signs he's planning on giving up his title. World number four Stanislas Wawrinka faced Kei Nishikori. The Japanese is ranked just one spot below the Swiss, but the difference on the court was far bigger. Favrinka was in control all along, winning the quarterfinal in straight sets 6 3, 6 4, and 7 6. And he actually feels he plays better now than he did a year ago. Uh, I'm, I'm more aggressive, I'm more confident with my game when I come to the net. But uh, again, it's a grand slam. Uh, you play every two days. Uh, today was a, was a great level, was a great match. And now I'm going to enjoy a little bit, watch who's, who, who's going to win tonight and get ready for, for the semi final. So Vavrinka, like all of us, saw Novak Djokovic book his place in the semifinals after beating Miloš Raonic in straight sets 7-6, 6-4 and 6-2. Djokovic and Vavrinka also met last year in Melbourne. It was in the quarterfinal back then, which the Swiss won in an epic five-set match on his way to the title. What will it be this time? We still don't know, but we do know the world number one is yet to lose a set this year in Melbourne and has only lost one service game so far. No doubt he feels very confident about the match. Yes, I take I take a lot of confidence. I try to um, try to carry that in, in in every next match, next challenge. Obviously, I'm going to play Stan, who is a defending champion here, and uh, we played uh, five sets uh, matches in 2013 and 14 in Australian Open. So I'm going to be ready for the fight. But uh, knowing that I have raised the, the level of performance uh, tonight and probably playing the best match of the of the tournament so far has. Um, is affecting my, my confidence in a positive way and hopefully I can carry that into the next one. Now to the NBA and to the sad news. Coming out of LA, Kobe Bryant will probably miss the rest of the season. His shoulder injury requires surgery, which will leave him out for months. This coming after two other injuries, which saw him miss almost the entire of last season. And some big questions are already being asked, with one standing above all. Will Kobe Bryant return to play, or is this it for one of the best players we've ever seen? Michael Friedman with a story. It's another blow to one of the best basketball players in the world. Kobe Bryant tore his right rotator cuff and will likely be out the rest of the season. With years in the league, the five-time NBA champion has displayed true strength and resilience over the years proven time and time again that he can push through anything, a characteristic his coach truly admires. You know, with the Achilles last year, everybody said he was done, came back, and I think, you know, the first month of the season, he proved everybody that he still has a lot left in the tank. So I think he still has that hunger and that competitive nature to come out and prove it again, you know. But, uh, you know, obviously after the surgery, I'll talk to him again and see how he is. I'll probably call him today as well because I told him I would, you know, and uh, we'll talk and we'll go from there. Despite his age, Kobe continues to step onto the court desiring more championships. He had another big milestone this season as he surpassed the great Michael Jordan to put him third as the all-time scorer. But if he hopes to reach Karl Malone or even Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he will need to once again show the fight in him. Despite all the Lakers players worried for their leader, they are all staying positive in hopes of his return. So bad for him. He's a warrior, man. And uh, he's been through a lot these last two or three years. Um, you know, I feel bad for him. But, you know, Warriors are, like I said, Kobe's a warrior. He'll come back stronger. He'll attack his rehab like he always does. And he'll be ready for whatever's ahead of him. But the big question surrounding his latest injury is whether or not the 36-year-old will return or step away from the game. While it's never easy to retire, his coach believes he will not want to leave basketball due to injury. Kobe. I don't see Kobe as the type of guy that wants to leave his legacy on this on this terms. You know, I think he wants to go out on his own terms, so we'll just have to wait and see. So with many hopeful for the legendary Bryant to step onto the court again, we'll have to wait and see if this non-spring chicken can prove once again that he has what it takes to continue playing hoops. And without Bryant, the Lakers lost last night to Washington. In another game in the NBA, the Milwaukee Bucks traveled to South Beach to face the Miami Heat. But before we speak of basketball, take a look as to who was in attendance. Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather were both courtside. Every boxing fan is dreaming of a rematch between them and the ring, but this time they were only there to watch some hoops, and hoops there were. 
It was a close contest for three quarters. The Bucks took an early lead, but Dwayne Wade with a three-point play made sure they don't run too far. Second half and look how fast the visitors run to the fast break. Middleton gets a steal. Brandon Knight drives in for the dunk. The game was tied at 82 coming into the final 12 minutes, but then Milwaukee took over. Jared Bayless came from the bench to score 15 points along with seven assists as the Bucks win it 109-102. to Yesterday, January 27, 2015, marked seven years from the liberation of Auschwitz, the worst of the Nazi death camps. Among the millions of victims murdered there and the few who survived, there were some notable Jewish sports figures, especially from the world of boxing. Lise Barnbaum and Michael Friedman bring us some of their stories. Of the victims in the Nazi concentration camps, many were top athletes. 70 years after the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau, survivors remember their horrible ordeal and the death marches that killed great sportsmen. One day in January 1945, with terrible cold, we get home from work and we were told it is over. The camp was evacuated and closed. I saw all the people who showed some signs of fatigue, walking a little bit. Many were shot by the SS as they were walking next to us which is what we now refer to as the death march. And you see rows of thousands of people, and on each side of the road we saw piles of corpses. There were famous boxers who experienced the horrific days in the death camps. Teddy Petrovsky arrived with 700 other Polish prisoners in 1940 and took part in inhumane boxing against the German guards for some food. In 1941, after eight months of hard labor and malnutrition, he boxed for Legia Warsaw and succeeded in defeating his opponents thanks to his agility. His victory gave hope to the other prisoners. After this, he took part in another 40 fights in Birkenau and 20 more in the Neuengamme camp, where he was transferred in 1943. Teddy then died in 1991 at the age of 74. The SS intended to humiliate the fighters. Hungry for high-level matches, the perpetrators were seeking professional boxers as they entered to the camps. They even built a real ring and provided gloves for the boxers. The referees were also professionals, a shame that Germany still bears the burden of today. Auschwitz is a mahnung, what Menschen anderen Menschen antun können. Auschwitz is a warning of what men can do to each other. Auschwitz is a terrible part of the history of mankind. Auschwitz is the huge hit to the civilization by Germany. That is why this camp Auschwitz-Birkenau is filled with such heavy meaning. Other famous champions were also deported to Auschwitz. Victor Young Perez came from a modest Jewish family in Tunis. He moved to Paris and was crowned featherweight champion of France in 1930. Arrested by the French militia in 1943, he was then taken to Drancy and then deported to Monowitz camp, one of Auschwitz's subcamps. The SS officer in charge was an amateur boxer. Victor succeeded in beating a guard in a heavyweight fight, but he was then killed by a machine gun in January of 1945 during the death march. In 2012, the Euro Football Championship took place in Poland and Ukraine, and the German football team traveled to Auschwitz, an initiative after the anti-Semitic insults were made against the Israeli player Itai Schechter in Kaiserslautern. The teams of England, the Netherlands, and Italy all follow the path led by the German national team a way to show that the world of European sports does not forget the tragic events that happened 70 years ago. On to a completely different matter, and with just a year and a half to go until the 2016 Rio Olympics, the problems are mounting, the latest being the water level drop at the canoe and rowing site. Brazil's southeast regions have been grappling with the worst drought in 80 years, and this has taken a heavy toll on the Rodrigo de Freitas Lagoon in Rio de Janeiro. Dry land has popped up in shallower portions of the lagoon set to host the two Olympic events. Soaring summer temperatures have only complicated matters as the country struggles to find enough water to meet rising energy needs. The city closed the floodgates leading from the lagoon to the nearby Atlantic Ocean to make sure no more water was lost. The German Bundesliga will finally return to action from its long winter break. How have the players used this time? Here's an example. Mario Goetze and David Alaba took part in a driving challenge in the Austrian ski resort of Kitzbühel. And yes, they seem to know that driving at such high speeds in the slippery snow is a scary business. Manager Pep Guardiola can be calm, everything went as planned, and he will have them both ready for Bayern Munich's match in Wolfsburg 
on Friday night. Oliver Neuer did not join his friends in the Austrian Alps. He was busy doing something else. The Bayern Munich and national team goalkeeper was in Berlin as the local Madame Tussauds Museum unveiled his new wax statue. Neuer had a fantastic year which saw him win the World Cup with Germany and the German double. He was also one of the final three candidates for the Ballon d'Or along with the traditional other two, Messi and Ronaldo. If you think that posing for a wax statue is easy, think again. Neuer, who has a rigorous training schedule for his day job, described the process of having the double made as very tiring, but it sure came out nice. And that's it for us today. Don't forget you can watch us anytime on our website at i24news.tv, also on Facebook and on Twitter. Thank you for watching and have a beautiful day.